All right, the truck's packed up. It's October 27th, and I'm heading to meet uh, Jared, Jesse, Trin, and Dwayne, and we're heading to Colorado to spend 10 days in the backcountry uh, in wall tents and uh, going after mule deer and elk. I'm pretty excited. This is gonna be a good time. Hopefully we get a chance at some animals and get to fill some coolers. Um, sad to say goodbye to my family for about two weeks, but um, it's gonna be a good time and excited. So we're gonna arrive Friday morning and hopefully get started Saturday morning for the first day of the second gun season. I do, I have some. I used to use Arm and Hammer. All it does is make me stink four hours in, dude, and sticks to my armpits. I just get Arm and Hammer unscented. Yeah, yeah well, see, that stuff that's makes me stink. Yeah. Makes me stink even Clay, more than I could imagine using that for four days on your armpits, you won't be able to get it off. Chisel it off with a hammer. I get the power wash it off. All right, I'm out here in Colorado right now. I'm climbing up to this point. Overlooking this, these big bottoms, you can see one behind me. There's one on the other side of this point. Watching these bottoms for any kind of mule deer or elk traffic. Dwayne, Jared, and uh, Trin and Jesse are going to go to different other spots to do the same. The season starts tomorrow. Uh, we have over-the-counter bull tags, and we also have mule deer buck tags. So, hoping to see something here in this area. Uh, sun's going down. I haven't seen anything yet, but yeah, you know, it's hard to say. There's a lot of thick stuff high on those hills, and that deer could be up in there still. I'd like to get back here tomorrow morning for the opener. I got a good advantage when I can see some game trails over on the other side of the hill. There's a water hole thing down here, like a little area where there's some mud and water. And uh, there's a burned over area about a quarter mile to my east that I think they might feed in and maybe going back in this way to hang out. Okay, I just uh, found some elk that are out really, really far out. They're probably a little over a thousand yards, but I see them. There's one out. It's real dark in the front. I think it might be a bull and there's another one coming out. I'll try to zoom in. Stuff is by far the best, like budget. Yeah, that stuff's good. It's like that one. It's fluffy yeah. too. It keeps but eating. All right, just cracking light here in Colorado. It was set up right through this dead tree in that draw last night, and I saw those elk about 1,500 yards this way. On this, I can see that hill from here. I don't want to get too aggressive on the first day and push in there in case something comes through between here and there. There's several really good draws and trails in this area. So I don't want to, and the wind's coming from that. So I don't like screw up with my scent, this valley. So I'm trying to stay on the downwind side of all that. If I see elk go into that, I'll move up in there tonight for the evening hunt. But for now, I can see these different drainages that pop down here, here. Right over there. Up there's, up there's where the elk were yesterday, up in there. So, I am a little at a disadvantage. Well, <clears throat> no, a lot of disadvantage. I'm new to this stuff, so that's at a disadvantage. But also, I forgot my clip for my rifle. So, my would normally would have five shots in it or six, something like that. I have one, so I have a pile of bullets right there. I'm gonna be doing a modified version of a muzzle to reload with my 308, but hopefully it helps me pick my shots a little better. Um, if we have to shift, we will today, based on movement. Like I said, if there's elk up there or something else, but I'm trying to do the best I can to cover all this. So we'll see how this goes. I 
changed my hat up, got a little chilly. I also relocated. I was sitting down at that uh, juniper bush or whatever, and uh, I realized there's a little draw up here I couldn't see when I came up. I came up and gave it a peek, and it's actually a pretty big draw with a big, heavy gain trail on it right here. I gained a lot and lost a little. I was, so I'm about, I don't know, 50 feet higher than I was before, so I can see across the valley better onto some of these areas. And kind of tucked in here to these, uh, this dead, dead trees here. I mean, I should, I should see deer here. I really like this vantage point. I can really see good. decent relaxing palatability it makes it for in the view I did it! I got a bull! Yes! I got a freaking bull! No way! <laughs> Can you believe that? Can you believe that? The second shot, he kind of buckled. I ran over the hill. No way! I can't believe this! I can't believe this! You don't understand how happy I am. I never thought this would happen to me. I can't believe this. I looked up. Then when the horizon right there, I shot. I don't know where the first shot went. So I shot again, and I saw him buckle, and I ran up over that hill, and I could see blood coming out like from his side, and he's kind of like wobbling, and I shot and he just dropped. <sighs> there was three of them, three bulls. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, holy crap, holy crap. <laughs> I got a call, like a hundred people. Oh my gosh, my kids just called me like 10 minutes ago. I gotta call them back. Hello? Hey, I just shot a bull elk. You did, you a, bull. a freaking big ass elk. Did he, did he, did he drop? He's done. <laughs> yes. He's done? Yeah. Listen, listen, a bull elk. Yeah, I'm on the side of this freaking, 
I'll send you a picture. He's big. <laughs> like, it's not something you can drag off the mountain. He's like a thousand pounds or 900 pounds. He's big. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I, gotta, I gotta go get this. I'll see you later. <laughs> Thank you. I'm walking to this elk. But get a load of this freaking view. Look at this. Colorado, I love you. First day hunting here in my whole life, ever. And I just shot a bull on BML land, BML, Bureau of Land Management. Yeah, I see him. Here he is, dude. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I've never seen an animal so big in my life. Look at that thing! No way! Dude! Dude! Holy sh! Oh my gosh, dude. This is insane. This is my grandfather's gun. <sighs> Thanks, Pap, for everything. Oh my gosh. This thing is huge. I know they make them bigger, but I never shot one before. This is like a giant compared to what I'm used to. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Two, four, five, a five by five. Look at that, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. It smells like a white tail, just a giant stinkier version of it. Dude. Dude. Oh my goodness. Look at these tips and stuff. <sighs> we got in Colorado yesterday and in the evening we came out and different uh Aaron, Jared, Jesse, Dwayne and I went to all different areas and we kind of just watched different areas for what was going on and I saw or I thought was two bulls last night on the ridge here about the same ridge line but about 500 yards that way. So I wanted to get over in here today and hopefully get on these things and uh, what I ended up doing was I started down below here because the wind was coming from that direction and I was worried if I went all in in the morning my wind might bump everything out of that area. So I started out, out here about 300 yards and as the day went on I kind of worked this way a little bit I got the whole way to the top of that hill or mountain which is about like I said 500 yards that way and the wind was just wrong it was blowing into this thick stuff into these pines so I, was, I, I had to go I had to relocate so I looped with keeping the wind in my favor down over the hill trying to keep my scent out of this top and I got down over the hill here to a rock and I hung out there for about an hour and a half, two hours, and I was kind of kneeled down, and I turned around, and it was an elk standing right on this hill, about 30 yards from where I am now. And I was like, holy crap. And I glanced, and it was a bull. Well, I got the camera on him. I'm pretty sure I got him on film, on the horizon, and I shot, and he, I missed, or something. I, I tried to put another load in. I forgot my clip at home, so I'm kind of have a single shot 308 right now, guys. Accidentally ejected that second shot, it went click. I don't know if I didn't put it in right or what. I had to put a third shell in, and I shot, and I saw him buckle. and came over this little lip, and I couldn't see him anymore, but I, I, I was pretty sure I hit him. So I, I left the camera sit, and I ran up over the hill with my gun, and when I crested this hill, I could see him standing there bleeding, and I saw two other bulls with him. There was one, I think, a little bigger, but I'd already shot this one, and I was committed to him, and let's face it, he's a freaking great elk, and I'm not freaking, like, bummed in the least. Here he is. This is my first Colorado elk. And he is a stud of a five by five. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. I'm so thankful to everyone. <clears throat> I can't even freaking like, I can't even talk. I'm so pumped right now. I gotta get this thing off the mountain. <clears throat> That in itself is an adventure, but look at this big animal, big, beautiful elk. My goodness, my goodness. Gotcha. Is she waking up in the middle of the night? That's good. Let me 
pretty good, dude. All right, everybody. It is the next day. Um, uh, last night, I didn't film it because it was kind of a, a circus. I should have, I know, but we all met up. I met up with Jared, Jesse, Dwayne, and Trin, and we were able to actually drive a truck up to the Elk. Um, there's a lot of sagebrush here, and it was an access road not terribly far away. So we were able to get up to the Elk, we gutted him, and all five of us horsed this thing into the truck. So here he is, in the back of the truck. <laughs> so I'm taking him into town right now. There's a butcher shop in town. We'll get some good cuts and uh, get it all frozen. That'll make it way easier to get it back home and uh, back to Pennsylvania. Plus, they probably keep it on ice for us till we leave here, which is great. Otherwise, uh, we'd have to worry about storing it in our free in our coolers, and honestly, cooler space is still kind of limited because we're still early into the trip. Newsflash: Jared just apparently um, shot a mule deer buck, a pretty decent mule deer buck. Um, he hit it; thinks it hit good, but went over a hill. He's gonna wait a little bit because it was nine doe with it, and while they were watching it, uh, Trin's with him. A smaller buck joined the the chase or whatever, so Trin's gonna probably follow those doe around, hoping a bigger buck takes up the trail and Jared will then track his uh, buck so hopefully we got another one on the ground uh, second morning so two days into this trip and we got a five by five bull elk I'm stoked so pumped look at that thing one more time before he goes to the meat shop <laughs> yes and uh, and then uh, Jared's got a hopefully a your buck down his battery is about dead so I will charge it up and we will get to, uh, to hunting here uh, this afternoon or evening Well, I feel like I owe you all an explanation. Um, we actually arrived home from Colorado last night, and I guess kind of in the excitement of getting home to our families, but also probably more accurately, the uh, exhaustion of driving 28, 29 hours and just being so task focused. I forgot to film any kind of a, a closing to the Colorado trip. As you see, and I killed my first bull elk, which was, oh, I still am just jacked about that. It was so awesome. And then um, I was also able to to connect a few days later on my, my first mule deer buck uh, which again was an awesome experience um, the trip didn't kind of stop there uh, we we all did well um, Jared ended up killing a really good um, mule deer buck on the second day and uh, while he was kind of uh, packing out his, his mule deer buck he saw several other mule deer which uh, then led Jesse his brother to kill a nice mule deer buck the, the uh, third day uh, I believe it was the fourth or fifth day then Trin killed his first bull elk uh, which just like me he was super excited about that and what was cool about his is it was a little deeper into the mountains and we all met up um, and worked together to pack that elk out and uh, being able to pack a bull elk out um, off of Colorado Mountain the stars out and everything uh, it was just awesome and um, it's just moments like that I'll never forget. Uh, we left left Colorado with, um, we each had a mule deer buck and Trin and myself each had a, a bull elk. So came home with coolers full of meat, uh, which is awesome. And uh, just a head full of memories. And I mean, to me, that's what it's all about.